You nervous? Only a little. Only a little nervous? Yeah. Like, when was the last time you had a band in here? Oh, was what, like, before the pandemic in 2020, maybe, if not so 2019. We're, we're the first band back. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it is. And here we wrote a song about privilege. And... <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we only got a couple songs for you. Yeah. So, you know, That's whatever you want to talk about, it's your show. Yeah. You let well, us know. All right. You just let us well, know when you want us to play a song. Yeah. Well, I mean, what do you guys want to do? Because I want to do what you want to do. Well, interview. It's, you got a sheet over there, all right? All right. So, yeah, what yeah. have you guys been up to? Well, uh, well, <laughs> well, I couldn't play shows. Yeah. Surviving? <laughs> yeah. Spraying each other down with sanitizer in between practice. Mm -hmm. Trying to keep sanitary. Mm -hmm. Social distancing at practice. Actually, we haven't been doing it. No, we haven't done any of that stuff. None of it. So, but we are, uh, we did t take the pandemic to, well, Bezo uh, decided to produce our next album, which yeah. is coming out in a couple months. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if it doesn't get canceled. Oh, yeah, I went to submit our album, and it got canceled. Yeah. yeah. So we're in the that? middle of that right now. How does that happen? You really want to get it's, into that? Yeah. It's, it's kind of complicated. <laughs> we so. had to make some phone calls. Yeah. We'll work it out. Yeah, we'll get it figured out. But it's coming. Anyways, it's coming. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, yeah, so are we. Yeah. <laughs> of course. No, we still did a couple gigs through the pandemic, and it was kind of weird. Mm -hmm. We did one that was like a sit-down, uh, social distance, had to buy a table. It was just us and one other band. Had to stay on stage. Had to wear a mask unless we were performing. Like, Yeah, it was weird. Yeah. We only but, did one of those. It was, so. it was weird because it was like, yeah, let's get back out and go do it. And then it was just like, oh, yeah, this is more like a recital than a concert. Yeah. yeah. Like, there's really no reason to have a wireless. Yeah. We like, could just kind of... Everybody had to stay in their seats. Like yeah. One lady started dancing, and then she got reprimanded. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was like the 50s. Like, you're not allowed to dance in the aisle. Exactly. Go back to your so assigned seat. Exactly. Don't don't wiggle your hips. People are, like, pumping Evil. their fists and trying to rock out while you're sitting down at a table. And we're not really supper club type, type band. Yeah. Especially not after what we've done with Pudding. Mm -hmm. So, but, but it was still fun. Yeah, I mean, that's we, what we've been doing. We did we did one other gig somewhere else that was like a private party, and that was kind of lawless. We showed up like <laughs> lawless, lawless for end times. Yeah, and uh, any other time it would have been a normal gig. We, we ended up just doing it acoustic, and we were just kind of like, nobody here cares about anything. Wow, I can take uh, my mask off and fear for my health. Yeah. So. No chin diapers at that gig. Yeah. So it was fun. That was fun, too. We did uh, a live stream once and tried to keep with, ourselves busy. With Satan. Yeah. Satan mm -hmm. came and said, you know what? The people need to hear you. Mm -hmm. We'll make it happen. So. That's about it. So I guess we stayed busy. Yeah. You guys got anything coming up? Uh, oh, boy, do we. Yeah. Oh, sure. About yeah. that. <laughs> so. The floodgates have opened. Uh-huh. Actually, we got, a, we got a whole summer's worth of stuff. But in the immediate future, we're playing at the Grog Shop a week from today, opening up for Oakley Dokley. And Steak Sauce Mustache. And Steak Sauce Mustache. It's going to be fun. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of fun. We've been looking. Yeah. We we were supposed to play this show on the same date two years ago. We booked it in 2019, and then they just moved it from 2020 to 2021, and then moved it from 2021 to 2022. And it took it, it took so long that Oakley Dokley is now breaking up. Yeah, <laughs> they're like, yeah, we don't want to do this anymore, but we have to do that because we booked it. Yeah. So. But I'm excited. I was excited to play it back then, and then it's just like, oh, at least yeah. it's still happening. 
Mm-hmm. There's a yeah. moment there where there's like nothing in the calendar, and then you scroll and scroll and scroll. Oh, there's a gig. Oh, yeah. Oakley Dokley. Mm-hmm. Uh, Joe, you'd been talking about us playing with those guys for like five years. Yeah. yeah it's finally exactly. happening. It's finally yeah. happening. So. Hell yeah. Yeah. You going? Yeah, I am. That's That'll awesome. So, and then uh, May, we have, um, we got a spattering of gigs. We're getting back out there, you know. Um, going to be playing in Sandusky on the 20th. Um, uh, playing in Conneaut on the 21st. A little festival out on the lake. Um, yeah, break wall. Break wall. And uh, I hear they got good ribs. Yeah, a lot of people are excited about that one. Mm-hmm. And, I've uh, never been out there, so that'll be fun to see what that place is about. Yeah. It looked cool on yep. the internet. We're but gonna the internet lies. Um, the Friday of Memorial Day weekend, we'll be down at the McAlpine Meadery. And then uh, June, we're playing with uh, Polka Dot Cadaver at the Foundry. And, um, and we're going out for like a week in, ju- uh, in, July. in July. Yeah, from Baltimore all the way to Flint, Michigan. So we're doing that. Um, Got some weekend warrior stuff yep. sprinkled through there, too, in yep. July. So go to something involving a monkey dot com dot com it. And when you're there, you just look at shows and there'll be a whole freaking list. We'll look at everything on there. Exactly. All right. You guys want to play something? Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Speaking of which, during the pandemic, we released a pandemic song. Yeah, we put out a single that was kind of. Uh, I, I hesitate to say rushed, but promptly put out for the timing purposes of it mm-hmm. about uh, the pandemic and all the craziness around it. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, we actually released a video, but uh, the COVID, uh, the COVID police didn't like it. Yeah. Anytime we posted it on Facebook, um, it wasn't shared because it was like, oh, this contains the word COVID. You need to fact check everything. It's this just like this information. There's, there's no, there's no anything. <laughs> there's not even information there. Yeah. It's not even misinformation. <laughs> it's all pretty well, accurate. Here, Everything's what we'll crazy. do is we'll play it, and you tell us if it's full of misinformation. How about that, Mike? All right. All right. <coughs> <coughs> It was the best of times and the worst of times Took for granted the time that we had more time Now we lost that time right before bedtime Now it's closing time, can we get more time? Whoa! These are the end times If it's on our turf, gotta flatten that curve We're all gonna get what we deserve These are the end times. There's a sanitizer shortage, can't pay my mortgage. We're all gonna live on cabbage and porridge. These are the end times. Sports are dead, only one loaf of bread. The impending, unending, relentless entirety. The ever approaching, creeping, fighting, tingling. These are the end times. Never really liked you, so stay away from me. Why don't you practice social distancing? These are the end times. Carry a loaded Glock. They're all infected on the whole damn block. These are the end times. There's no TP and the felons are free. Locked down in the senior facility. 
these are the end times. Got a shelter in place, cover my face. Let's all start to finally embrace. These are the end times. Never really liked you, so stay away from me. Why don't you practice social distancing? Second wave, worse than the first, fourth, 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 fifth, fifth now. I don't even. Is Sec- anyone even counting the anymore? The second one was the worst. It was what? The you second. think that second one was the yeah. worst? Yeah, yeah. That's when everyone actually got it. Yeah. I don't know. The last one was pretty bad. The first was pretty bad in Italy. Yeah. In Wuhan. That was about it. But yeah. I mean, but locally, speaking, we shut it down first, and then. I don't the know. I think the fourth was pretty bad. The fourth one was probably. You know, fourth but one. it just—it's yeah, uh, just pretty bad. You yeah. Know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I guess. So. Yeah. It was the best of times and the worst of times. Just for granted, that time that we had more time. We lost that time right before our bedtime. Now it's closing time. Can we get more time? No, these are the end times. <laughs> Never really liked you, so stay away from me. Even if you don't have. COVID-19 These are the end times Yay. There you go, end times Yeah, it does seem like they didn't check their content No, not at all <laughs> <laughs> Nah can you say algorithm? Algo algorithm yeah. say no. Yeah. Do not understand the issue. No. no. I didn't understand that whole thing about like misinformation and information and all that. Like, disinformation. You, disinformation, you, misinformation, yeah. disinformation. Who are you to decide? Well, there there was plenty of that out there, but this wasn't it. No. Yeah. No, no. This was this was trying to. This was trying to put some levity to the situation. Yeah. And I'm just not uh, a fan of censorship in any way, shape, or form. Exactly. Personally. Yeah. So, but, uh, yeah, anyways, moving on. The world has gone crazy. It has. All right. I'm going to just, like, point at a random question here. Okay. Ask it. Let's see. Okay. Please discuss how you interact with and respond to fans. To, to what? To, <laughs> to fans? Fans. Oh, I oh. thought you said friends. <laughs> like, oh. no, it's kind of both the same. It's more <laughs> derogatory <laughs> smattering of insults and mm-hmm. flinging food at each other. Yeah. Pooping our, into our, our hands and throwing the people it. that come see us are... are are an interesting quagmire yeah. of motley people. Question your sanity <laughs> to make such decisions. Yeah. Oh. And that's what we love about them. Next. Yeah. Who are you inspired by? Oh, man. On, on what? Like in life or in yeah. music? Bob life, Ross. Life, love, oh. music. What? Yeah. Bob Ross. Bob Done. Ross. Done. That's it. Mm. He was that's... the one that made me an artist. Mm-hmm. I was actually going to wear a Bob Ross shirt today, but it wasn't that, clean. Oh. Uh, mm. That would have been awesome. Why was it dirty? What were you doing with it? He's painting. It just, Come on. <laughs> it's his painter shirt. I just want to yeah. make sure. <laughs> yeah. No, it just was still in the laundry. Mm. Yeah. It was me as a, as a very young child watching Bob Ross on, on public access when that was still a thing. Mm-hmm. And then uh, finding out about Jackson Pollock and, like, you know, splatter painting and stuff and then i made a mess and then from that point on i wasn't allowed to paint anymore Mm. and that's why i'm a musician because i had to buy a hotel some new curtains i had no idea any of that happened you you learn something new every day that's that's a insight into my childhood it explains a a lot though yeah really really Mm -hmm. does about you i mean yeah it's like Mm -hmm. definitely had to be a very traumatic experience for you yeah taking away my paints Mm. Just because I ruined some curtains. Jeez. Oh, you just made some curtains more colorful. Yeah. There you go. I mean, 
I don't know what happened to the art itself. I mean, but... Got thrown know. in the wash. I don't really have much of my art left. This is pretty much it. Mm. Just music now. Yeah. Mm. I make jewelry now, too. Bling. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess then how did uh, the other two of you get into music? How did I get into music? Yeah. Um, my mom would make me play the piano for 30 minutes every day, and if I didn't do that, she would beat me and starve me. So it was pretty much forced upon me. And, you know, it's like one of those things where you're just, it's like beaten into you that you just, that's all you do. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so, so I, guess I actually hate doing this, but yeah, if I don't, Explains a lot about PTSD. band practice. See, I learned something now, too. Yeah, yeah. So it, I, I was the only one here that actually wanted to play an instrument, huh? Yeah. Hmm, that's interesting. It. Yeah. Why yeah. do you want to do yeah. this? And you uh, chose dr drums? After I, yeah, I mean, I was really stupid to choose drums. I mean, this is the easiest gig yet, you know? But yeah. usually carrying around all that stuff is a real headache, you know? And a backache mm. and a neckache and, you know, so... Yeah, that, that part's no fun, and if somebody would have told me it was like that, I might have played the flute or something. Flautist. Yeah. Something easier. And not just this one. That's mm. better yet. Oh. As they call it on the street, the skin flute. <clears throat> That's the street name for the kazoo. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. You know, so look it up. It's on Google. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so that's a pretty special kazoo there. Yeah, custom made. Oh, wow. It's mahogany. And Brazilian rosewood. Mm -hmm. Gives it that Aztec feel. Yeah, and then, a, and then a $12 plastic mic to make it all happen. <laughs> because that's the only mic I could find that actually works for it. Mm. It's actually made for kazoos. It's called a humbucker. That, uh, uh, yeah. uh, they, they did that, not me. That's not my joke. That's uh, theirs. Mm. They actually mm -hmm. call it the humbucker. If you were going to go buy one from Amazon, that's how you would find it. Mm. Bezos' signature humbucker kazoo yeah. pickup. <laughs> they actually, I was looking when I, I broke this recently and I had to do a gig without the, the pickup and I was very sad about it. So I was looking to replace it and I found that they actually make a studio grade version, but it's still the plastic kazoo and the plastic pickup. It just comes in a flight case. And it's just like, why do I need a flight case for a plastic kazoo? I want well, maybe better, it would have never broke. I want, I want to, I want to. You would have taken care of it properly. Well, I mean, I still drop it on stage. I mean, I've already knocked you over instruments be, in here. You put the flight case underneath. This way, when you drop it, it falls into the flight yeah. case. And I trip over it, and I knock it over because I tripped over the flight case. Well, that part's not under the warranty. Yeah, it's solely your responsibility. Bad things happen. It shows. Mm -hmm. I mean, like a. I got instruments here. They got all sorts of dings and dents mm -hmm. in them. Make some, make some character. These are my players. So, uh, what's your favorite venue you've ever played at together? Peabody's. Yeah, I miss Peabody's. I miss Peabody's so yeah. much. There's so, so many good memories in Peabody's. Even before this band, like, we played our first show at Peabody's. Yeah. With uh, Downtown Brown and Carmen Bozia. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good show. It was fun. We played so. Peabody's a lot in the early days. And then, sadly, it is no more. Mm -hmm. Kind of moved into the foundry a little bit. I really yeah. like playing there. We're playing there coming up pretty I, soon. Probably my, my one recently that I, I really like playing at, I just like the scene down there is Busman. Yeah, I like Busman. playing there, too. That's yeah, fun. Busman's cool. Yeah. yeah, and the Meadery. Yeah. So it's the, kind of the same crowd. Because they're really close together, mm -hmm. the McAlpine Meadery. So, it's been fun down there. Mm -hmm. Ooh, the during Christmas that Southgate House revival, oh, yeah. we Southgate. played there a couple right. of times down there in yeah. Cincinnati. That's a cool venue. Yeah, that was when I got COVID. I was down there. Oh, that's fun. Probably gave Cincinnati, Satan gave it to us. Cincinnati got COVID. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whoops. So. But. But yeah, I, I like playing down there. We've played Cincinnati a few times, and Southgate's the the place that yeah, that's been really the best stuck place. out the most. Yeah, that's really cool. So, does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. And then, if you could play anywhere, where would you want to play? Southgate again. 
I'm going to go back down there. <laughs> Satan, if you're listening. Yeah. Uh, uh, me, personally, I'd like to play in the ocean. Yeah. I want to play <clears throat> Peabody's again. I wish they'd build it again and do it. That would be that would hilarious. Be, that, if I, if I had awesome. anywhere, I would resurrect Peabody's and mm-hmm. play one more show there. That'd be cool. I, for whatever reason, I'd, I'd want to do the Peabody, the old Peabody's down in the flats. Yeah, yeah, like that place. That was. That it was, was good. Yeah. yeah, it was, that good. was good. We, we got to play the Odeon the recently. It was right there, and it's like I had mm-hmm. never played there before. That was kind of yeah, the nice, Odeon's all right. It was okay. Yeah. It was like ah, this isn't living up to the hype that I wanted to. If my my childhood seeing so many great bands play there, and then yeah, yeah, so. That was yeah. like the bad side of Peabody's was resurrected at the Odeon mm-hmm. with the management and style and everything. But I don't know if that even answers the question, does it? Yeah. I know me personally, yeah. I've always wanted to play the Agora Theater. So, Bezos played the Agora Theater. I've yeah. never played the Agora Theater. Yeah. I did once. We've played the ballroom, yeah. but never the theater. Played the ballroom a bunch of times, but never the theater. Yeah. Hey, Chris. Yeah, hey, Chris. Chris. <laughs> so all right so this one this one's for scott i've heard that you played in pair ubu once i did yeah uh, what was that like uh uh pretty interesting um at the time i really wasn't doing much um uh the former bandmate of mine michelle temple has played with them for since going over 25 years now and I played in this band with her called the Vivians. And um, it was after I left there. They were in the middle of recording. And um, our Scott Krause um, had left the band and they hadn't finished tracking the record. And out of the blue one day, I got a call from this guy, this British guy, and it was their management in London. And uh, Michelle had passed along the. Uh, the Spades Meltdown single that came out right around 93, 94, something like that. And that was my audition. And I was like, yeah, you know, let's see if Scott will do it. He's up in Cleveland. And, well, can he play? It's like, here, she handed him the single, and the guy just called me. And I ended up getting together with Jim Jones and and went over some of the demos that they had been putting together and came up with parts and went into Suma and tracked it with Paul and uh david thomas paul hammond's gone now we lost him a few years back Mm -hmm. Uh, great sound engineer um legend to cleveland music scene recorded so many bands there and great place to play and fantastic room and it was a great experience recording with them um you know uh dave thomas he's he's a pretty unique character um definitely has um has this quirky way of going about things that you know, when you work with them, you kind of get an understanding of how Ubu gets their sound, um, and it's it's kind of a pretty unorthodox way to work. And when I was in there recording, pretty much the whole record was already tracked, and I went in there and played my parts to to it. And I'd say if uh, the only thing that was kind of weird about it, it's like some of the best stuff I thought I brought in there didn't make the record, so it's kind of whatever, you know. But that no, was a great experience overall, and um, that was how I ended up in that situation. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. And then how does that uh, differ to how you guys work together? Um, well, this Probably. band, th- these guys write in a very compositional sort of way, um, and um, that's yeah. kind of that's kind of not really how I like to work. So yeah, we get a big dry erase board and it's like a giant math problem. I'm writing these symbols, you. symbols and everything <laughs> like this is how the song goes. And you yeah. guys are like, I don't understand any of that. And I'm like, well, exactly. there it is. I don't even so look what at does it. that symbol represent? It's okay. this riff. Yes. Do, 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 do. Right. So. I, do, I find memorizing is just works a lot better than staring at that thing. <laughs> but yeah, for me, um, like I said, it's we I'm used to writing through experimentation and jamming and things like that. And. That's really not the case here, and so the trick to it for me, I guess, is to try to make it sound like it isn't compositional and more off the cuff. Um, 
and it's kind of what we were really going for with this record in terms of you know having a real natural drum sound and uh, mm -hmm. and a looseness about it you yeah know. We, we went out of our way to set up a click track and um test out the click track and play to a click track and then just completely abandon everything about it like it's just not on the grid it doesn't the click track almost didn't matter oh like, yeah but it did very much yeah but we, i mean we we practiced to it and it was in there but like not right all, when we needed it we yeah. got rid of it yeah <laughs> yeah pretty much but i mean like a lot of bands nowadays they want to be like on the grid to the point where they'll edit everything tight to the grid so it's like it's all perfect and look at where all the nice neat little kick drum everything lines up and it's just like it comes off artificial in a lot of ways and like a lot uh, I, I feel like if you're not on the grid and you have that little swing to it you're pushing it a little here and you're pulling a little there and 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 falling on it like that that little bit that it's off the grid is that that feel um i tried to preserve as much as i could when we were recording whereas like a lot of bands today would just like force that out well, even the whole process of creating the, the tempo maps that we did was yeah. like we would rehearse stuff and, you know, and it was like, yeah, I wanted to slow down a hair there. And, you know, I'm like, well, yeah. just, you know, make the click and I'll follow. It's like, no, I don't want no. the, I don't want you to follow the click. I want the click to follow you. Yeah, it's like trying to program it to actually slow down like we play it because like music is emotion and a lot of times emotion will will change your heart rate in a way that like makes things faster slower you know like if you're in love time flies or if you're bored just time drags so much so like when you go into certain parts you want things to slow down you want things to speed up you want to bring energy with the tempo too and a lot of people like you can't just have one tempo you have to you have to have that that feeling and and, and movement to it yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's interesting because a lot of modern music is so tempo, click, on mm -hmm. the grid oriented. And you think of classical music and none of it is like that. Yeah. And, you know, even back in the 80s, it's like when everything was drum machines, it's like it never made any sense to me. It's like, why did it have to be like that? Mm -hmm. It's like music was never like this before. Now it's all these machines and stuff. And it's like yeah. it's losing its it's human edge and it never made any sense to me and it was like you know just following some of the you know composers that i liked back in the day you know or you ever go see the orchestra and you know we have a great yeah. one here in town it's like watch a conductor you know conduct an orchestra yeah. and it's like it's it's amazing and to watch a lot of people don't even realize they're doing it when they do it nor naturally like i i uh I produced a friend of mine and we started making uh, click maps to his songs. And here I was like doing all this tempo maps and everything. I'm like, yeah, you slow down almost 10 BPM there. He's like, what? Like, Every time you've played it, you've played it like that. You know, it's like, I don't want to force you to the click and make you play that part faster because that's the way you feel it. So it's just like people, people don't realize that like you usually do play the chorus a hair faster. You, and then you go into the verse and you slow down a little bit and like, there's just a feel to it that, it's lost yeah the the biology feels it you know mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. a human playing it mm -hmm. and it does get lost and i can only imagine great. how much things get exaggerated playing live i'll just get caught up in the feel of it and sometimes you go back and listen to it and go wow we played that fast <laughs> yeah. yeah it's usually it's like what i was happens. amped up That's there was a girl in the front row that got me all amped up and now mm -hmm. all of a sudden i started that song way too quick mm-hmm you know, Slow down, goes. big guy. Yeah. You're going to yeah. pass out. Yeah. It's only so much blood. <laughs> mm, don't get a cramp. <laughs> we played a gig down in, in Lexington that was like that, and there was like a catwalk or something like that, and I was like, I'm going to play over this catwalk, and then like when finally when it was our tur turn to uh, go, there was like some chick just happened to be standing there. I'm like perfect and i got to like stand over top of her and stare down her shirt i'm like that's exactly what i wanted to happen yay like mm -hmm. so funny. that was, was bezo's favorite venue was, to play yep there that was my yeah it was it was uh what was that charlie's is that what cosmic, cosmic charlie's. charlie's cosmic charlie's yeah. yes yeah we got a recording off the board that night and uh the guy's like you want me to mix it too i'm like nah, i'll just take it he's like are you sure i'm like yeah i don't want to pay extra money for it 
I got it home. I listened to it. And I'm like, this is garbage. I should have paid the extra five bucks. <laughs> like, <laughs> he warned you. Whoops. So it wasn't all, it wasn't all great that night. It was a good show, though. It was. I got to get back down there. I miss that band that we played with that night. They don't, uh, they don't do anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. So you guys want to feel some music out for us? Yeah. What's a song that we uh, drift in tempo a lot? Um, uh, you want to do a new one? Yeah, we can do a new one. Promote the new one? We'll, we'll promote a new one that we're not playing Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. And we don't normally play it ac- acoustic. Mm-hmm. So Actually, we've never played it acoustic. Yeah, this will be, be it. Yeah. We were just messing around with it. Like, yeah, this song kind of works. Yep. Let's just do that. So... Should I say the title? Yeah, go ahead and introduce it. Okay. This will be off our new album, but it won't be acoustic. It'll have, you know, it'll be all electric. And it's called Someone Worse Than Me. sure helps your complexion. Why don't you have another cheeseburger? 
my excuse will stand right there Makes me feel better when I err Gosh darn it if they ever succeed I need them to be worse than me Need to find a better way Thanks, thanks for playing that. Yeah, yeah. I, it was literally last week, uh, we we're like, "Hey, that actually works on acoustics." Yeah. So it's harder to play on a tambourine than the drum kit. I yeah. think. <laughs> Me. Playing it on a fretless instead yeah. of frets. It's like I gotta so actually so get my fingers right. But otherwise, no, it's weird. Oh, I'm cool. playing the keyboard parts on the the uh, acoustics. So whatever. Yeah. When you Excuses. hear when you hear the real version, it'll be completely different. From yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. They'll be all yelling and there'll be profanity. It'll be so much better. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Profanity really makes it. I found we we use a lot of profanity. It's really difficult to not. We're not use here. We're trying to yet. keep this you know, general <coughs> exactly. audience kind of uh, you know, quality. Doing well. good so far. Please the Sunday crowd. <clears throat> so, what? So, uh, who are your biggest influences? Who are our biggest influences? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Collectively? Yeah. Um, Apparently, Primus and System of a Down, because that's what everybody says when they hear our band. Yeah. And actually, we hate both those bands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I go to every single Primus song just to yell that they Primus suck. Primus sucks. Yeah. Primus sucks. I go yeah. to every single one. I mean, and they still keep touring. Well, the they last, never listen to me. The last time we took a band field trip, we saw Primus at uh, um, what's that venue that's not there anymore um, in Cleveland. Um, no, we were down in Akron. No, that was oh, down that in was Akron. A, was, yeah, where they had the right. lasers and our seats oh, were beha- yeah. uh, I'm conveniently of, behind a I'm, pillar. Well, no, we went there with that Todd. That was awful. No, we went there with him. No, the, the one at uh, Tower City. Remember oh, that? the amphitheater. And they, and they messed up and everything, and it was just like, wow, this band is not good. They truly suck. They actually do suck tonight. Yeah. So, I don't know. I like. So, our, I, I guess our out. hatred for Primus is one of our biggest it's, yeah, influences. It's a big motivator. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then you get into like, well, Morbid Angel, and you mm-hmm. know, I don't know if Frank I could. Zappa. I can know if I could say AC on on the radio. Um, yeah, AC, not AC DC, just no, AC. just AC. If you if you if you type in AXCX, that's often how they've abbreviated it. But yeah, um, a lot of our earlier stuff was wildly influenced by Seth Putnam. Mm. And, he's uh, dead now. Yeah, he's dead. He's not um, alive anymore. And uh, Mr. Bungle, I guess would go yeah. and and Frank Zappa. I think I said that already. Yeah, definitely. Um, after that, it just I don't know, it spirals into Motown. Um, yeah. I mean, Classical I'm, music, jazz for me. I love a lot. I'm big of into jazz. like Macedon and a lot of like stoner uh, rock and sludge exactly. stuff, too. Sure. And the so. original drummer uh, Todd and I got really big into like Isis and Neurosis and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of a yeah. a theme early on. I do like Godflesh and classic yeah. industrial. Yeah. And Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. A very eclectic musical. Yeah, taste. we just covered like fourteen different genres right there. <laughs> hmm. I listen to a lot of those. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Even get so. into like the funk. Listen to some like Here Come the Mummies or mm-hmm. stuff like that. So. But. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Been listening to The Cure a lot recently. I don't know the why. The Cure is great. Maybe I'm depressed. No. No, that's. Anyways. All right, here's a fun one. How yeah. would you define success? Huh? What are you talking about? <laughs> I've we're, had success since the day it. I was born. <laughs> In uh-huh. music, it's making any my amount of mother, money whatsoever. My mother's greatest success was me. <laughs> I'm saying not have to pay for our gas to get to a gig. That's, mm. that's, that's nice when that happens once in a while. 
Yeah, I mean, I've pretty much ignored success as much as possible. I'm really good at it. I guess for me, if I could make money without having to talk to people, I want to yeah. get get rich from music and not famous. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Be able to hide in a studio and just like, oh, here's music. I'll listen to yep. it going by. Yeah, good luck with that one. Yeah. Mm. That would be success. Have we answered any of your questions? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That was a, All right. Yeah. I was I was a genuine answer. I, yeah. That's how I really feel. I that we could ask you a question. That and Bob Ross. I really. I really. Yeah. You could you could yeah. ask me a question if you want, but think of these more as prompts than questions. Prompts. So this is, yeah, okay. It's I gotcha. I gotcha. Oh. Okay. Hmm. Have you ever heard of Vomitron? I have not. Dude, you'd love Vomitron. It's you apparently are a big Legend of Zelda guy. Yeah. 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 You are. Let's just face it. You can't. You've been trying to hide it. I see it all over the place. I yeah. The <laughs> I actually got. I actually got oh. really big into like a lot of eight bit music. I started doing some of our stuff in eight bit. Mm-hmm. And uh, I forget there was this uh, band I uncovered on Spotify. I can't think of their name. They do like all eight bit Nintendo cover stuff. Mm-hmm. from back in the day and I like going out and cracking out on stuff like that Vomitron though is a metal band that takes all those classic 8-bit including Legend of Zelda and makes it like like heavy metal music it's awesome yeah gonna look up look you better up later. Look. someone yeah. did that with like the, you'll be hooked the Mega Man all the Mega Man stuff someone did all that mm-hmm. that was a lot big part of my childhood was Mega Man so mm-hmm Hearing all that stuff done Metroid. in Metroid. Yeah, Metroid. That was another one. Mm-hmm. The classics. So. Mm-hmm. What are your main impulses to write about music? <laughs> to so, write about main impulses? <laughs> so with the new album, it's more of a... Well... <sighs> response to a lot of... Uh, what we see in the world today, yeah, with uh, kind of on the outside looking in, you know, cancel culture and a lot of social media stuff and uh, pornography. Well, pornography was a, mm-hmm. a pretty big uh, point. We got a song about pornography on the new album, mm-hmm. and hopefully, someone will get a rise out of that. Hey. So, but that's recently. I mean, yeah. some of some of our other stuff's been about. Well, oh, about we, pudding. Yeah, we can yeah, play Yeah, we can play. Air, this is, here's one of our Im- impulses. I've got pudding on my face. 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 Roofies. Oh. Yeah, that 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 song, um we were at band practice one day and I had pudding and I got some pudding on my face and I was like Oh my God, we gotta write a song, and we like ran down in the basement. And I don't know if we still have the original recording from <sighs> when we did that. And it was, it was, it goes like this. And then we played the first part, and then Joe's like, oh, "I'm gonna do this," boo doo boo boo boo, and played the middle part. Like, yeah, let's do that again. And like the whole songwriting process was like a two-minute audio clip of us playing in the basement. That was the whole song, start to finish, mm-hmm. in like three minutes. We basically recorded it. We recorded it just about as fast as we could play it, and that's mm-hmm. how that song was written. Yep. Because because uh, I got putting on my face. And then the video for it oh, was filmed f- in a couple hours and took all day to clean up. Yeah. Yeah. We we shot it in like twenty six minutes and then took three hours to get get all the pudding off the ceiling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what I was thinking that day. I showed up and then um, we shot the video. 
and then Nick ran upstairs to go to the shower. Joe went into his his area and went, went into the shower, and I'm sitting there like wiping pudding off the ceiling with like putting caked in my beard. And I'm like, why didn't I think of that? I need to take a shower too. Mm. I should have brought a change of clothes. I'm <sighs> so glad I wasn't involved in that mess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just know, Scott, if it ever gets bad, at least you didn't do the pudding. I yeah. Didn't, I didn't do it. We had help that day, though. Rachel. Oh, yeah. Rachel, Rachel was there, and Rachel she Rachel showed up and up. cleaned up. So Katie was always good help. Yeah. Shout out to Rachel. And Katie. And Katie. Yep. Helped us clean all that up. Mm-hmm. Kept us in line. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you never know where inspiration's going to strike, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, we wrote, a, we wrote another song. Um that was about a literary device um we can play that for you too really quick okay um it's called uh puns are fun yeah it's that's it that's the whole song it's just puns are fun yeah i missed it yeah well now we gotta do it again now we gotta do it again puns are fun there it is yeah that's how the song goes why don't you try it mike puns are fun nailed it yeah Look at that. You could yeah. be in the band now. Yeah. Oh, cool. So. Yeah, we used to write a lot of really short, dumb songs, and we didn't really do that that much on this this album. I had like two of them. Yeah. So. Maybe we'll get back to writing short, dumb songs. Yeah. We'll call the next album Short, Dumb Songs. Short, Dumb Songs. <laughs> It'll be like an AXCX album where it's 46 tracks in 26 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. A lot of songs are just like ah! <laughs> so. that could have been a song right there. Ah! So. All right. So, has there been one particular moment in your musical career that you are most proud of? There's a couple there. I, I think that that one festival at uh, that Coyote Grove Festival we were oh. playing and. And we were, we found out the next day that that some young it? lady there was uh, using a some sort of hallucinogenic. Yeah, she was she was hallucinating wildly and, during uh, our performance. And we we totally freaked her out. She mm-hmm. heard us and couldn't come out from her. She she went her tent. Bag. She went back to her uh, camping area and found that the noise did not elude her there. And and, um, and, and, and basically she writhed in terror for the rest of the evening yeah. due to our music and that i that, i couldn't think of a more was, yeah and there was the it was the next time out there that we found out about it compliment and, yeah. yeah and that was like yes that her terror was our like that means greatest we, moment that means we did the halloween album properly if we made someone that afraid exactly i'd have to say the other one which is 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 a close second if not an equal was when we were doing one of these acoustic sets. Because from time to time, we'll do these acoustic sets, like kind of yeah. what we're giving you here. But but we will incorporate cover songs into them. And, um, and we were opening up for um, El Creepo, which yeah, is an which idea, is man. An idea, man, with our, our uh, uh, acoustic set. And um, the crowd was enjoying it. We were getting them all warmed up. They're dancing and... This, there was this couple in the front, and this lady's loving it, right? And uh, so we went into, we do an acoustic version of Stripped, Raped, and Strangled by Cannibal Corpse. Mm-hmm. And as we started to go into that, I just saw the look on her face, this huge smile turned to just absolute disgust. And like, and her boyfriend knew the song and was like so excited and he was like yes this is awesome which just made it worse for her yeah and i just watching all that joy and happiness turn into disgust and and just filth on her face it just wasn't yeah remember that question you asked earlier about how we treat our fans (laughs) there you go (laughs) Yeah. We answered that one by accident. Yeah, once they start enjoying themselves, so, we've got to change it. Honestly, when, when Joe made the original phone call to get this band together, I remember having this conversation where I told a story about a song that I had with a band that I played with years ago called Ava Label. And we had a song called Happy Ending. And the whole beginning was like really happy and upbeat and, all happy and, and, and nice. And then at the end, it went into this grindcore ending. 
And I remember there was this, this these girls in the back at this this venue we were playing when we played it, and they were dancing and they were enjoying the first half because it almost has like this, uh, I don't know, um, like hippie uppity t- tone to it. And then we go into like straight grindcore, and I remember them just like stopping and like their jaw drop, like, why would you do this to this song, mm-hmm. and just utter disgust. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's a goal that I wanted to achieve with mm-hmm. this band is to take someone to that place and then take it away from them. <laughs> and perhaps that performance was, was the moment we actually achieved that and that someone was really enjoying our show. And then we played stripped, raped and strangled and ruined and her all that, evening. Yeah. Oh. Women in general don't really like songs about rape. I've I noticed, don't blame them. I, don't blame I really years. don't. I don't. And so I kind of agree. Yeah. I, I, I get it. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. But I also can't pass up a good opportunity. Yeah, that's a, that was a great cover. What do you enjoy most about being a musician, and what do you hate most? Well, I think we just express what we enjoy yeah. most. Yeah, it's basically getting people to get, enjoy our music and then destroy suffer. it. Yeah. yeah moving it's, gears sucks. Yeah, moving yeah. gear sucks, especially up oh, and down well. stairs. Although there was one show recently, well, it was before the pandemic, but um, where we lugged 100-something pounds of bananas into the club without telling anyone and then released them upon the crowd during mm-hmm. our performance. And at first it was massacre. like, yay, bananas. <laughs> and then after about a song, it turned into, oh, my God, bananas. Yeah. And then after we played, the club was just kind of like, all of these bananas. But I'll tell you what, this is why we like playing at the Buzzbang. Yeah. Because yeah. they asked us back. Yeah, they had us back. Yeah, they we did. Played, we played outside, but they did ask us back. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, so yeah, that's do that why. out there. Yeah, yeah you know, I, I never put, put two and two in. I yeah. never put that exactly. together. Uh-huh. You guys can't play inside anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I was like hiding them behind the sound booth and like sticking them in the walls. We gave like a dozen to a bum outside, and mm-hmm. they're yeah. like, "All right, we brought too many bananas." <laughs> we were we were opening up for Green Jello, so probably, Bill Man Speaker ate some of them. Yeah, we probably could have got away with only seventy five pounds, but the whole one hundred and twenty was a well, little too much. Well, we we went into the Giant <laughs> Eagle and we bought every banana that was on the shelf. I left them like four. a whole shopping cart full of them. Yes, and Dre- a lot of bananas. dressed in banana costumes. Took the the woman checking us out about. 10 minutes to weigh them all out and ring it up, you know, and there it was. It was the worst day of her life. It was one of those moments where you could actually see question marks appear over people's heads. Yeah. Like, well, they, if, they were, if they were like well, Sims, was, you can actually see that was, the puzzled look <laughs> manifest in a cloud over top of You were wearing a banana suit, though, weren't you? Yeah, I was talking about <laughs> free, freeing all the bananas from captivity. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Dressed yeah. as bananas. I, I filmed the whole thing. Mm-hmm. We never did anything with it. It's not on the we internet. We could still do something. Yeah, we with should put it. that up. On maybe the we, maybe we write a song and be one of our, you know, off the new album, yeah. stupid dumb songs. Yeah, <laughs> write a banana song. Yeah, because we always so. seem to write at least one song about food. We didn't, we didn't write a song about food on this one. This, you know, the more I think about it, the more yeah. that this album sucks. Messed coming up. up. And I'm not snoring on this album, or no, I've snored exactly. on every other no album shorts, for some reason. Like. There's, there's actual content and things yeah. we're talking about. Yeah. You might it, sorely be disappointed in this next album. Yeah, it comes comes more from inside of us yeah. than... Maybe we should cancel the album. Yeah, we'll start over, <laughs> just scrap and go back to the drawing board. Mm-hmm. Just write some more new songs. Yeah. All right, so what else do you want to get out of this interview? <laughs> Well, we got another song. Yeah, about, we can play about it. food. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's it's very much about. Uh, it's analogous. This thing doesn't want to stay in tune. So, but this was off of our um, album called "The Dive Into the Great Blue Waffle," and it's the title track of said off album. Gr- dive into the Great Blue Waffle. Yeah. Called. Dive, dive into, into the, the Great, Great Blue, Blue Waffle. waffle. Yeah. I'm hoping, actually, before we get into this, that um, I'm going to actually release my blue waffle recipe upon mm. the world, mm. hopefully in the next couple months. It's so good. Um, we we did a, a, a crowdfunding campaign to come out with that album, and one of the perks was I could come to your house and make you waffles. And a lot of people 
um, partake. And they expected us to show up with like Eggo waffles and spray paint or like their expectations were like so low that here we were like actually busting out like organic cane sugar and real flour and we're separating eggs in their kitchen and they're just kind of like, what is going on? I'm like, oh yeah, I'm making you waffles from yeah, scratch. That's what's happening. Yeah, folding the egg, the egg whites in separate, and like the whole the whole recipe, and uh, we just dyed them blue. So, um, still have a lot of blue dye. Yeah, blue Excuse food coloring is not a uh, it's not a substance you can come by easily. I learned this like it doesn't come in a lot of like the the party packs and stuff like that. So I had to go to a um, food supply store and buy a liter of blue food coloring. So if there's ever and a shortage of blue food coloring, yeah, just contact us. The recipe it. only takes like three to five drops. So I have a lot of blue left over. If, if anyone actually needs blue, just email something involving a monkey and we'll pour yeah. it into a little container. I'll, yeah, I'll we'll hook some, you up, yeah. I'll yeah. give you some blue. Yeah. But um, in the meantime- Every, every new uh, album, that is purchased. We'll get it. You'll get three drops of blue food yeah. coloring. We'll dye something blue. Yeah. But hopefully, I'll be able to um, uh, perform and uh, record that recipe, a tutorial, sometime soon, um, so that everybody can make their own blue waffle and enjoy it as much as this. So this is now the long-winded introduction to dive into the great blue waffle. One, two, three, four. If I share, I will sink, must hold it. Lesson too is you know sometimes 
you have no choice but to dive into a uh, less than ideal situation. Mm-hmm. Kind of like the pandemic. We were just kind of stuck there eating it for a little while. Mm-hmm. So the pandemic was just one giant blue waffle as much as, spread across as the much whole as we world. like to uh, 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 annoy our audiences. We did really miss them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Well, yeah. Annoying each other is not fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's well, just, it is. It is fun. It's but too natural. It's not as much fun. Yeah. Because, like, if I annoy an audience and then we leave that night, I won't see them again for well, a, a while, while, if ever. You know, we'll see each other again next week, and we'll be like, oh, I'm just still mad at you. <laughs> oh. It's like, really? Are you farting in here again? We've <laughs> been good in this studio today so far. Mm-hmm. It's not like band practice. No. Lord knows. Sometimes we can control our bowels. I've ruined a many a band practice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The best part is that Scott's got this little fan right next to him, so anything I let go just goes right through well, the fan and across the drum set. Well, actually, since that groundhog died underneath my house, oh, yeah. like now now there's a the new, new smell. smell. So it really doesn't matter how we show up or what we do. Yeah. So, and I can't get them stinks. out. Thankfully, that goes stinks. right into the control room where I got to work. Yeah. I'm just like... Ah, the smell starts here. Yes, exactly. I th- today, the flies started flying around. Oh, so, uh, so. Now we know he's gone. Yes, he finally expired. Yeah. Our IP groundhog. Mm-hmm. So. We won't get into how the groundhog died. That's another story. Mm-hmm. We'll save that for another day. Yep. It'll be on our new album. Yeah. Stupid songs. Stupid songs. Oh, so there we go. No, that's wrong. Mm-hmm. Okay. So. So the the new album has a story about how this groundhog died. Oh, the new album we haven't written yet. Yeah, oh. we're, we're, we're gonna write yeah. about it. Yeah, it, it, we're we're the best promoters of yeah. our own stuff. We, 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 I could already tell now that we'll take great inspiration from. The groundhog because he's had such a profound impact on our life so far but he him, will he will and the other three yeah they they the family of groundhog that mm-hmm. joe is systematically attempting to re- eradicate it's been a story yeah so if we keep on with this you're gonna have to tell the groundhog story but yeah. I don't know, we'll I don't know what the point. statute of limitations on all that is. So we'll just <laughs> yeah, we'll just wait on that. <laughs> we'll leave that alone. It is on my private property. So. We'll, have to, we'll have to do do some legal investigation before we... So. We'll get back to you on that get next interview. Then you can ask me what my inspirations are. I mean, dead groundhogs. By then he'll probably have a name. <laughs> oh, Chuck isn't good enough. <laughs> Hmm. So. Anything else for us, Mr. Mike? Oh, I guess not much. Mm-hmm. Did you want to play something else? or? Definitely. Let's play oh. something All right. Else. I mean, what do you want to hear? Yeah, you want to hear anything? Right. We don't care that much. There you go. Thank you. Good night. Yep. Yeah. All right. Yeah. This was something involving a monkey. Yeah. Thanks for coming in. No problem. Thanks for having us, Mike. Nice seeing you. Yeah. Thanks, Mike.